drove for just seven months and uh, he got through two qualifying rounds to win it. So um, Terry's been reflecting on that and, uh, well, a lifetime in snooker. A Greek shepherdess. I think I met her before, yeah. Terry Griffiths here, 31-year-old, <laughs> former English amateur champion on two occasions. It's a long time ago. The time seems to go very quickly, you know, as you get older, it's worse, you know. I mean, I, I retired 21 years ago, 1997. I'm thinking, 21 years? The first year, 79, obviously, it was only the second tournament I'd played. I lost in the UK Championships. Um, and uh, then when I went to Sheffield, my ambition was to get a few exhibitions because in those days I only could play in two events. Because to be honest, we didn't have much money. My wife had gone back to work, uh, children and everything, and, and bills as everybody else has. And then I had a disaster. I, d I drew Perry Manns, he was number two in the list, and um, the other person in the hat was Ray Reardon. And if I had drawn him, I think I would have lost because he was my, he's my hero, you know, he's brilliant. Next thing the BBC said they were going on strike on the day I was playing Perry and Mann, so I was, I was devastated. <laughs> it's very little I'm asking for in it, that's all I want is a few exhibitions on my face on the TV. I think that's why I won. Because with me, I was just there to have that and everybody else wanted to win the, the tournament. I thought I had no chance of winning the tournament. Then I beat Alex Higgins 13-12 which was a great match, the best match I've ever played, I think. And, and I'd done 125 uh, from the break off in the last frame. And I always remember Alex Higgins, and he said, I had a kick on that red when I missed the long red. <laughs> it was a great match. I loved playing Alex Higgins. He was so exciting, you know. But then I went through then from there, and I was very relaxed, to be honest. So I lost 14 pounds in Sheffield. I lost 14 pounds. Stress. No time to eat, don't sleep. You know, I was just getting further on, I'd never been. I never played as many friends as I played there in my life. Before I was an amateur, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, the final was first 24. The Crucible, when you go there for the first time, it's a wonderful place to go and play. I'm sorry for any professional snooker player that hasn't qualified for the Crucible because it's the ultimate place to go. I've gone there and had the strongest mind I've ever had in my life at times, and other times I can't get off the chair, I'm so frightened. That's what it does here. It's like, it's like I suppose, like Wembley in, in, in the big football matches, or Twickenham, or Cardiff Farms Park, or whatever you talk about. It's just a, just a wonderful place to go. With the semi, I played Eddie Charlton, who obviously is, is, is a tough competitor, and I got well in front of him, and all of a sudden I just couldn't see the ball. So, you know, I was so tired. It, it's amazing, I mean, you know, it's, it's a huge different experience from the life I've had. All of a sudden I came back late on against him, and I think I beat him in 1917, yeah, which uh, was my, fav my, my famous. I'm in the final now, you know, with David Vine. I played well in the last few frames. I just couldn't get my rhythm earlier on because Eddie stopped you playing, you know. I'm in the final now, you know. Terry. <laughs> and then I played Dennis then. I was well in front of Dennis. And, and again, I just couldn't, I couldn't play. I was so tired. And I thought, I've come all this way now. And what I've got to do, I'm not interested in in getting in this final, I'm going to win the championships. And, and I didn't have the right to say that because Dennis, obviously, is a very good player. I'm glad he won the world after because it's not great when he lose up there, you know. But um, then I came out and I was just buzzing. I was just buzzing. And Dennis Taylor concedes. <laughs> a great performance by a very cool and calculated Snooker it's strange, you know, the thought of winning the World Championships is, is something, you know, you dream about. But when it happens, it, it sort of goes flat all of a sudden. You've won the World Championship and blah, blah, blah. And I'm a working man and, uh, not, you know, I'm not used to being in places I was going to. Um, like, like at one time, I was booked up for seven months for exhibitions. It was hard for me to take in all those things. 
it is you know it is different the next thing they're asking me to go up uh, to London to do this thing and film in and and there's people saying hello Terry and thinking I don't know them who are they then all of a sudden I get used to it and then I'm having press and talking and starting to get a little bit you know the old ego is coming in with all that you know but uh, I never thought I'd win but um, it, it was nice you know I could you know do things and buy things for my family and my children it, it changed our my my family's life not my my life would be be wrong to say it is my life but all of a sudden I had, had lots of money you know and just, just looking you know to pay the bills uh, like a, a month later and now no you know I mean I was on um, three thousand pound a year with the pearl assurance that was good money then very good money you know on my first year I earned seventy five thousand pounds we didn't know what to do with it you know my, my wife was like me she uh, comes from a council house and you get all this money, you think, well, <laughs> let's spend it. <laughs> and then one day, a friend of mine, who used to go down with your play, used to come down and practice with me. And we're going up the M6, and it's empty and down with rain, and we're driving up to one somewhere for an exhibition. And my friend's gone, <clears throat> do you know, Terry, it doesn't matter where you go or what you do, you'll be champion of the world. So I always remember him saying, we were a wet spot from Neath, you know, Mario Bernie. I thought, good God, of course I am. Not the world. It's about six months later after the championship this was. So you, you find, I, what I did find out and I think about is winning isn't everything. It, it never is, because nobody, nobody wins all the time. Nobody, in any sport really, you know. Well, well, Liverpool do, but I mean, nobody else. <laughs>